Hi, welcome to the Ambient iPad. Let's make some music. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate one approach to making ambient music, and that's by using sound on sound looping. I've been trying out the iPad 12.9 inch version once again. Uh, so with the larger screen real estate, I find it easier to use the on-screen keyboard. And so I'll just be using the iPad today. It really makes it a much more portable music making machine. So I have an instance of 8 Matrix open. You can really use any app like GarageBand or Cubasis. You can also use something like uh, AUM. And uh, I like 8 Matrix because with the Matrix it allows me to turn effects on and off easily while I'm doing a jam. Let me walk through the sounds that I'm going to use and the effects. I'm really using just one synth today and that is uh, Hillman by Clevgird. And this is a, a string synthesizer. Lots and lots of sounds and capabilities in that. I will demonstrate this in a moment. For effects, I'm using Other Desert Cities by Audio Damage. It's really a flexible delay where you can do basic delay and also do some weird stuff as well. I also have Kajita, which I'm using. And uh, this is really a combination reverb and delay. Again, does traditional basic things, but also does wild, wacky things as well. I will primarily be using it as a reverb. There's a little delay in there, but you're really not going to hear it that much. And then I'm using Tap Delay by Verison. I'm using this as the looping device, so uh, this is a delay. And um, I like using longer delays for looping rather than a traditional looping app because you can have the different elements of the loop fade out over time. And uh, just makes sound on sound looping is a lot more flexible than um, if you're trying to do a song and you want a verse and chorus, then a traditional looper is probably better. Uh, this is mimicking a tape delay, so it has a lot of those features that can degrade the repeats of the delay over time, and that'll happen with the sound on sound loop. So besides uh, having the repeats get darker over time, I can control the wow and flutter, the bias of the tape head, add some tape hiss and some saturation as well. So with this, uh, I usually start at 95% repeat so the volume of the elements of the loop will just decay very very slowly over time and when I want to do a solo I just take it out of 8 matrix and then I'll boost up the uh, feedback or the repeats so that the volume doesn't uh, lower. Now with this app even if I set it to 100% the volume still does decrease over time so you can actually set the feedback on tap delay to 110% when you start getting up in that area you definitely get some self oscillation, but uh, I keep it around 105 and I don't get the oscillation, but the volume doesn't really decrease over time. So I, I will show that as well. All right, so sound on sound looping is essentially using a delay and you add an element. And immediately after you add that element, if you do have the feedback, so the repeat set anything below 100% in a traditional sense, then that will decay over time, the volume will go down, and you can keep adding more elements, and it's really a great flexible way to make a very cool evolving soundscape. Let me start just by demonstrating the sounds that I'm going to use in Hillman. I need to turn off tap delay though, or we'll start creating the loop, and I'm not ready to do that. Again, I'm using the on-screen keyboard. The uh, Hillman is a string synthesizer. There's a lot of capabilities and a lot of sounds in here. I am uh, going to start with a traditional string sound, but I'm going to turn the phaser off because phaser is a huge part of making a synth like this uh, sound sound like strings. I mean, it doesn't sound like a Mellotron, uh, but the synthesized string sound is, is very classic as well. So here is a string setting with um, just a little bit of reverb, just a little bit of chorus, but no phaser. I just want to demonstrate how much the phaser adds to a string synth sound. Actually sounds more like an organ, but once you add the Phaser. Gets more of that string synth sound. And go into another sound here, like violins, which I'll be using. Let's turn on the phaser there. Oops, yeah, let's have a.
and some lead type sounds I'll be using. This is called Cinema. Shimmer. Really, really traditional string sound. Kind of like a Selena. And flutes. Doesn't sound anything like flutes, but it's cool. <laughs> so I'll be using that sound as well. So let me start with the strings. And I'll demonstrate the effects. They're kind of on right now. Um, and as you can hear, you're, it's really not doing anything wild or wacky. So I have Hillman going through a patch in other desert cities, and then I will switch it for the soloing part over the loops to Kajita. Again, nothing radical, just to add kind of a little bit of reverb and maybe a little delay in the background. So how does this work with the looping? So the first thing I'm gonna do is, because Hillman is going through other desert cities for the loop, I need to enable other desert cities to send the sound to tap delay. And then essentially now the delay is armed and any, once I start playing, it'll start doing that sound on sound looping. So it's really a quick way to just get this kind of background soundscape going using very little notes. Um, this will be an E major, so I'll choose a few E major notes and you'll kind of hear how it evolves from one sound to multiple sounds. Go back to strings. Let me open up Versen. And again, the feedback is on 95%. Uh, so if I do nothing else, the sounds will just slowly decay over time. And I have some basic settings here. I'll walk through these as the, uh, as the loop's going and I'll change them so you can hear the difference. All right, so there's the, you know, just a few notes in the E major scale. I'm gonna move this up to 105%, so now the loop will not decay at all. So you're hearing it kind of move, some of the repeats move across the stereo field. That's controlled by the rotation setting. In tap delay, right now I have that on 70%. I have the wet dry mix 100%, so that the repeats are the same volume as the original sound, at least on the first pass. Other traditional, tape delay uh, capabilities are in here while in flutter. You can control the bias of the tape head, add some tape hiss. You can also add saturation or distortion. Really, it's more of a warm overdrive to the repeats over time. And of course, damping uh, darkens the repeats over time by lowering the frequency response. This naturally, because I have it set to 40%, will darken them each successive pass. And um, 95%, which I usually have the repeats on, is a very, very slow uh, decay anyways. But for now, I have the loop just kind of going on in the background. And then what you can do is, I want to turn off tape delay from the perspective of I do not want more sounds adding to the loop right now, but I do want to do kind of a few sounds over it. So let me switch over to Kajita for that. I want to change. The Hillman sound, let me use Shimmer. It's usually a little too loud, so let me lower it a little. Lower the reverb, let me add a little phaser to this. And then you can just do some soloing over this. Raise the volume just a little. And then, 
change this, so we're going to add a new loop or new elements to create a new loop in here. Again, reverb down, a little bit of phaser. I want this to go back through other cities, and we need to enable that, so it imprints to tap delay. So at this point, let me lower this down. Typically, I would lower it back to 95% and have the loop just slowly go down in volume and then I would add new elements but in the interest of time and I'll do that for the jam but in the interest of time I went down to 90 percent okay it's gotten a little quieter that's enough now I'll go back to the 95 percent and now I'll add in those flute sounds so this original loop will keep decaying uh, over time as as the new elements do as well but it'll just keep going in the background so there's There'll be the new loop, and then there'll be the interaction with these sounds as well. But why don't I just do that? So it's much better to demonstrate than talk about it. Oops, bum note. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Let's hear what happens. Actually, it's not a bum note. A is in the key of E major, but it does sound a little off. That's okay. He yeah, add something over this. Keep layering that same thing. And one more layer of that. So that old loop is still in the background. Let me get this up to 105. But now you have those new elements. And again, I didn't mean to hit that A even though it's in the key. And it's kind of disappeared now. It stood out a little before, but now with this new loop going. And the old loop keeps decaying. I mean, right now it's frozen, but it was decaying as I was making the new loop. And then, once again, we can turn that off. Let's keep, uh, let's keep Hillman going through other desert cities. And uh, how about cinema? Let's hear what we've got here a little. Just to add some more atmospheric sounds over it. The loop is off, so. Nope. <laughs> a little bump note there. There's a G. So I do notice, if nothing else, with the larger iPad and the more real estate, it's easier for me to use the keyboard. Now, of course, you can make the keyboard, um, and this is the keyboard that is part of uh, 8 Matrix. Um, you can make the keyboard uh, less keys, but the keys are bigger. I like to have at least a few octaves or a couple of octaves available, but when I would do that on the 11 inch, I would hit wrong notes a lot. Um, I still hit some bum notes here because if you don't hit it right, my finger moves and then you're hitting the other note. But it's definitely easier on the larger iPad. And then, uh, let me just do one more sound here. The flutes, which again are just strange sounding, but cool. A little overdub here. And you could play with the effects in Hillman. And that's, that's it. I mean, it's really a quick way to get that loop going. I didn't need to add the second elements. And um, it's the interaction of the notes, the different effects you use, experiment around. And I, can, I do looping like this uh, a bit in GarageBand. It's a lot harder because once you hit record, the screen kind of freezes. You can't change anything. So you really have to think ahead. But all the other apps out there, Cubasis or AUM, uh, they'll work similarly to this. So this, again, is just one approach. Uh, but but my, my goal here was just to show with one instrument, a couple of effects, and, um, you know, a long delay as uh, the sound-on-sound sound looping. You can really do some cool things. Now, what I would do to kind of close this out is... I would now start to lower the uh, feedback on each successive uh, nine second, since that, that's how long the delay is, so that this whole pattern. And then I probably, you know, I can start 
adding in more kind of artifacts from the wow and flutter, make it darker as it's going, move the rotation so the stereo field seems more, and then just keep going down. I'll do this much faster in the jam. In the jam, I would just have this slowly fade out. Because I like this, this is cool. I mean, I could keep this going for hours and just solo over it and um, just chill out. It's a nice, relaxing kind of sound that just goes on and on. And uh, actually, I did use a similar approach to uh, a longer video that I did, and I'll link in the description or up here while this is playing, uh, using a visualization app. And the same kind of theory of just adding elements and having them fade out and adding elements. So let me just go down even more. This is just fade out quickly. One interesting thing is that there's not a lot of apps available for the iPad that'll do delays more than three or four seconds. Um, that's why I got tap delay. None of the apps that I had already had that were delays would do uh, looping this long. Now I do use Gauss, which is a great looper, but there's a bug with Gauss where when you want to do the overdub, so you turn record off and you turn record back on, there's a thump. That's a known bug. I hope it's fixed someday because Gauss is just a, just a fantastic looping app. But Tap delay works as well, and actually you have a little more flexibility with tap delay uh, with all these features because it's emulating a tape delay.
So again, this was just a quick, easy way uh, of demonstrating to just make a quick uh, ambient loop, some ambient music. Uh, you could just make the loop and have that playing in the background for a long time um, because it's ambient music is uh, you can either have it in the foreground or it can be in the background while you're doing uh, other things. So. I really, sometimes, uh, of course, I love the Mellotron. I use that a lot, but but I, I really do like just being able to do some stuff on the iPad. It really just makes it a nice mobile device, not even if you leave the house, but I'm sitting on a couch just making some ambient music. I could very well go to another part of the house and do the same thing. Well, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And good luck with your own music. <laughs>